All righty. Well, thank you so much for the people that have joined us, taking the time, um, and for the people that are watching this recording as well. I'm going to present myself and uh, my colleague, Elodie. She's a product owner who will be giving us the demo on Holla Spirits. And myself, Sophia, I am the head of content and events for Holla Spirits. If you don't know what Holla Spirit is, is a platform to practice self-management, bring agility to an organization, um, and very easy to use also features that you will see, um, the LED will show you around um, to really just have a lot of transparency, clarity, um, accountabilities of who's doing what, um, effective meetings, um, <clears throat> and OKRs as well or to align your goals with those to the organization. So probably instead of me chatting, I'll let Elodie to show you around the platform. And if you have any questions at the end, feel free to ask chats, um, ask our emails or anything like that to be in touch with, with all of you if you're interested. So Elodie. Hello everyone. I'm really glad to uh, do that presentation with you today. So as uh, Sophia said, I'm product owner, newly product owner of Holy Spirit, so part of the product team. I'm really happy to present basically the, the work of the team um, to you and, and show you around the platform, show you around the product and how it works to um, support agile organizations and new ways of working. Um, so I'll just step in straight away into the product and show you what Holy Spirit looks like. Um, if you have any questions, I think, Sophia, you said you mentioned you are facilitating as well. So I'll be answering yeah, what I can in the yeah. chat. And if not, at the end, probably you'll be the best person to answer those technical questions. Hopefully. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be okay. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Yes, amazing. Okay, let me close this. And this as well. All right. Um, so welcome to Holy Spirit. I will show you uh, my demo platform that I used to show around uh, to our customers or even internally when I present new features. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Holy Spirit, but this is what it looks like um, to map your organization. So um, I would believe that most of you might know how um, mapping an organization with a with an a chart with rows and a uh, circle might look like. If not, I'll give you a tour. Uh, this is basically my organization, which I called Holy Demo, um, which is contained in one big circle, which basically represents my organization. And it's made of circles and rows, which represent um, the work in my organ organization and, and how it's distributed uh, amongst it. So. You'll have different teams um, made out of circles and roles within them that um, you can navigate to really easily with this type of chart, uh, which gives you an overview um, of how they're organized and um, yeah, how they work together in a sense. With the roles and circles, you can basically um, access directly their content very simply as well. So we'll take, for example, this employee experience circle, um, which is one of the teams that I'm a part of. And if you click on the circle, you can see the circle page itself with all the information that you might want to um, add and might want to see about the circle to understand what they do, what their work is, um, what their accountabilities are, and many much more information. So most of the time, all, all the time, you have, of course, um, the main information for the role. So you have purpose, which is basically the, the reason why um, that team exists strategy which you can add, the domains, which is basically the, the scope of action, um, which is um, the circles, which is the circles, really. Um, the circles accountabilities, then you can have policies, uh, which rule uh, the circles domains. So explain how 
uh, the circle works with these domains. So if, for example, um, you have, let's say, a circle which is the finance circle, they might have a domain that's called budget. These policies will be in place to um, rule and explain um, what these domains are about and how they, how they work with it. Then you can add any customized um, fields to rows and circles. Um, here I've added many, many, um, like three of them, but you can have many more and add many more as you like. And you can basically choose um, how to work with them. Something really important as well. So let's remember in that case that this circle is a team. So it's made of roles. We have different types of roles um, on the side and you can see all, all the members that are part of them, uh, which gives you an overview of what uh, the team is about, what the roles in the team are about and who is a um, member of that team. So you have many types of, um, of circles. And you can basically um, choose to make them whatever you want. It can be a team, it can be a project team, scrum team. It's really up to you to customize your platform and build your organization just the way you want to. Um, if we dive into the different types of roles, I've created, uh, let's say, an HR team uh, right there. And we have many, many different types of roles. Um, I'll explain to you why they are in color a bit later. But basically, the rows and circles are made uh, the same way. Uh, as you might know, in um, holacracy, or I hope in sociocracy as well, um, a circle is basically an extended role. Um, if there's a need for uh, a role to be extended because it needs more work, it needs more people, it needs more energy, you'll be able to do it and create a team out of it. So in this, um, in this circle, you have many roles. Let's have a look at a role that we have here. As you can see, um, it looks the exact same way. Um, and it's up to you to navigate it and you can activate and uh, access many, many information about the roles and uh, the circles themselves. Uh, you can see the members that are part of your circle. Uh, you can see the documents if you've added any. You can see the activities, uh, the activity log of the circle. So what's happened basically in it. If people have added, edited roles, um, sorry, deleted roles, all that kind of thing. The metrics and checklists um, that need to be reviewed by the team uh, and the projects, actions and OKRs, which are linked to the apps that you can see right there and uh, that I will present to you a bit later on. Um, to give you a bit of an overview of the other tools and apps that we also offer on the platform, um, let's start with uh, the proposals. So something really, really good about Holy Spirit is that mapping your organization belongs to the people that are actually in it. It's not down to administrators to do it. It's really up to the people that are part of the team. Um, to build and structure and make the organization evolve. Um, with that, we offer two different types of um, decision making. So for administrators, if we go in decision settings, you can see that we have two different types of uh, decision making settings. You can decide that evolutions, building your structures, Governance uh, decisions are made freely, so you can build your platform just the way you want. But something that people really love and really work with um, is consent, which is right there. What does that mean? It really simply means that um, to be able to apply an evolution, add a role, elect a member to a specific role, um, delete a role, add a policy, all that kind of thing, the governance decisions need to go through um, consent within your team. We know it's really important to discuss everything, to discuss things, uh, bring tensions if there are any, um, discuss anything that could link to what can be better. So having it in meetings is great, but you can also do it asynchronously on, on Holy Spirit. So if, for example, let's say I'm part of the um, employee experience circle as I am now, I can create um, a new, role if I want to, I can decide to add a role, I can decide to create a role and uh, submit it asynchronously to my team. I'll show you here the um, proposals um, app 
basically allows you to do that. What will happen, uh, this is right there, what I did. Um, I submitted, uh, I, sorry, created my proposal with um, the role that I wanted to create. And then I can just submit it to the team, which will receive a notification and be able to decide if they consent to the creation of that role or if they object to it. If someone, one person in the team does object, um, the proposal won't be validated and it will get back to me. If I decide that um, this role is really necessary and I have maybe something else to add to it that could change um, the way it's been presented to my team, I can always make changes to my proposal and send it again. Um, also something very, very important, um, you can use the proposals themselves to discuss uh, these types of things. So you have the activity um, section here where you can share comments you can mention other members as well well um, if you mention them in the activity section they will receive notifications uh, that they've been mentioned so you can use the platform and all activity and comment sections as a form of communication to work on your proposals to discuss how they can be improved um, just share your opinion share ideas share suggestions and make sure that the work can be done asynchronously without having to go through uh, really long meetings um, and it saves you a lot of time and uh, and energy so i think that's about it for uh, proposals you can see submitted proposals as well here so the proposals that you can save so for example you decide you have an idea to create or change uh, the structure of your organization you can decide to save your proposal and think about it and submit it when you're ready um, when it's submitted you'll see it here so you'll be able to see all the proposals that have been submitted that are that are ongoing um, within your organization and especially within the circles that you are a member of uh, and then here you can see all the history of proposals you can see here i'm the only one um, making proposals in the organization but usually many many people participate in this process um, but yeah it allows you to to keep an eye and follow up on what's been done um, and the decisions that people are making within the organization um, and this links, of course, to governance, but this links also to um, another um, app that we call Publications. This is a very new app. It actually hasn't been released officially yet, um, but we can test it. Any of our user can test it um, with the experiments mode that I will show you a bit later on as well. Um, with publications, which is really good, is that you can document literally anything that you need to, you want. Um, we usually, we tend to um, show around this app to document processes and how roles and circles work within the roles and, and circles, but also within the organization. Um, with this app, you can see the publications of your uh, circles and roles, so the circles and roles that you're part of. Um, and something really great about it is the editor that we've spent a lot of time on, but also the fact that you can collaborate on uh, documentation. So here, for example, uh, I have work in progress right there. So you can see there's an edit in progress. And if I want to, uh, I can join the edition. So if, for example, let's say another member of my circle uh, notices that I'm working on this publication, they will very simply be able to join um, the, the collaborative edition in real time and I'll be able to see them um, work on it and we'll be able to work on it asynchronously and again uh, no, not necessarily need to be together and uh, in a meeting to do all the good work that we need to. With publications uh, you can comment as well so asynchronous work is very important to us you can still use um, the comments here for example to uh, share your ideas, share changes. If, for example, I highlight here and I can tag uh, Sophia, for example, or like, let's say my friend Arno and tell him it would be great to change that bit and maybe replace it with another. So again, because it's a comment section, they will be uh, notified that uh, they need to take a look at this part of the publication. 
Uh, the reason why I said earlier that um, publications are linked uh, to proposals is very simply because to be able to um, publish a uh, publication, if consent decision making is applied to the type of publication that um, you're creating, you can submit the version that you've created that you've worked on to your team that um, can be reviewed and if they agree and if they consent to the version that you've submitted, they can approve the publication and it will be published along the way. Um, so yeah, very great, very good. And we're more than happy to hear your feedback about it. I'll let you know how to share your feedback if you're already using Holy Spirit, because um, it's uh, it's something that we're working on at the moment uh, that you can test right now. Some of the other very exciting apps that we uh, offer are the actions where you can list your uh, to-do list, your actions, uh, which can be linked to uh, projects that you work on. Uh, so you can see your actions here, you can complete your actions, uh, you can put a due date on them just to know exactly uh, when your action needs to be completed and you can share actions with your circle. It can be an action to do a task basically for your circle to do, for you to do uh, as a member, for your role to do. It's really up to you to um, assign it to anyone uh, that you'd like to. Here you can see your completed action, so you can keep an eye on, on the work you've done and uh, hear all actions uh, of the entire organization. Know that actions and projects, which I'll, I'll talk to you about in a minute, uh, are set to change. This is one of the biggest uh, projects that we have uh, with products where we are going to, like we are currently working on it actually, uh, massively improving um, actions and projects to make sure that transversality opens up the way uh, people work with uh, actions and projects, which is basically going to be tasks and projects coming up. Um, projects here, so as I told you, uh, you can work with uh, actions within them. The way it works currently with projects is that you have a project board uh, for each circle of your organization. There's one project board for your circle, so for your team, and it's up to you to decide what it looks like and um, how it's organized. So we use a, a Kanban approach with columns here that you can move, that you can rename if you want to. Um, it's really up to you to, to make it look the way um, you, you work in real life. And then you can add projects to it uh, and assign projects to some roles or people in your team. Um, you can add labels, due dates as well, a description to your projects and a to-do list here. I'm showing you right there. And those to-do lists are basically tasks list that are linked to the actions uh, app that I showed you earlier. So if, for example, um, I have a project here, let's say uh, it's the happiness project. So, um, say that my task is be happy. I can link it here to uh, my tasks and it will show in my actions um, my actions app right there. If I click on the little uh, magic wand here that was next to it. Uh, what's great with projects as well is that you can also work asynchronously, of course. You can link your OKRs, which I'll show you in a minute as well. Um, add attachment to the card. The goal is, is really to have all the information you need on one card uh, for you to be able to um, just read it and uh, get all the, all the data, all the information you need to work with it. Um, as well on all operation cards, so as I, I showed you earlier, for example, on proposals, uh, you have the activity section right there with the comment section, uh, which you can use to communicate with your teammates. Um, you can mention people so they can be notified and uh, work directly on the, the project card with you and exchange ideas and suggestions. It's really up to you to decide the way you communicate on Holy Spirit with them. Um, and of course, you can move around your projects depending on, um, on the flow that you've defined. Um, also here, you can search for projects. All the pages for apps allow you to uh, filter and sort group depending on the type of cards and type of items that you have on it. Um, and you can also, with the projects uh, app, see the projects for all circles apart from uh, if they are um, confidential. So as a circle, you can decide for your operations. So 
um, actions, projects, OKRs, publications, everything relating to your team or to your circle to be private, meaning that only the people part of your uh, circle will be able to see uh, the project board. If your circle is not private, if it's not confidential, everyone will be able to um, access uh, the project board and for transparency, of course, see um, what you're working on. So here, for example, I can um, access different um, different project boards of the mem of the um, of the circles that I'm not necessarily a part of. So here, as you can see, the hiring team, uh, they have a very different um, flow on their board and they use it for uh, recruitment. And also here I can see archive projects. So when uh, you're done with your projects, you can decide to archive them and they're still here. So you can still have uh, access, just keep access to them, um, but able to not see them in your Kanban anymore. Um, and of course, you have your projects right there where they are um, they are just um, organized with your team. So I can see that here I'm part of two teams, employee experience and sales. Um, so I can see the two project boards for my two teams in my projects and also only the projects that I am uh, assigned to. So if, for example, I have projects in my team here that other people are assigned to, I won't be able to see them in my projects, of course. Um, Another app that's very good and that we've added uh, new features to very recently is the OKRs app. Um, so OKRs are basically objectives and key results, and they allow you to set a goal for your organization, for your team um, to achieve in a period of time, in a timeline that you've, um, you've set for your team and for the goal itself. Um, the OKRs are you have many views for OKRs and this is very new. The timeline has actually been released yesterday uh, or the day before. Um, it allows you to see your OKRs, so your objectives set in time, depending on the time frame that you've set on them. Um, so here, for example, if we look at uh, this one here, we've set on this OKR that we've created uh, a circle that's been assigned. So it's been assigned to the product circle. Um, you can see here that we've added a time frame, uh, the time frame in which it needs to be achieved and completed and, and reviewed. Um, you can see uh, here that you can attach other OKRs. So of course, maybe some OKRs contribute to, to others. And um, next I'll show you how these OKRs um, can be seen and how they work together visually. And then of course you have key results, uh, which you can uh, see the progression for um, and see how, um, how much you've achieved uh, the main objective which you've set. Um, also, and still, you still have the activity section with the comment section, so you can still work with your teammates and uh, mention people in the activity section to uh, notify them if you're adding information, for example. Um, you can add attachments as well to uh, OKRs and uh, you basically have the same uh, side panel and uh, options that you usually have with the other cards, uh, which is very rich. With OKRs, as I said, you have many different types of views and the timeline, timeline sorry, um, view is fairly new, so you can navigate it with your trackpad, with your maps. Uh, you can decide to group all the OKRs by circle or not. It's really up to you. And you can decide also to um, basically filter with the time frames, the different time frames to identify uh, the OKRs that you're working with. Uh, you can also navigate the time frame uh, right there. To add an OKR, just click quickly um, click here. Um, Basically, this button to add anything, depending on the app you're on, will always be in the top right of your screen. You have many different views as well. So you can see your OKRs and all the OKRs of the organization uh, with the timeline view. You can also have a list view if you'd rather work that way, where you can also group your uh, OKRs. With the list view, you can see all the OKRs that uh, are in your organization. Also, all the archi archives, sorry. Um, OKRs uh, of the organization. And as I mentioned earlier, if you link uh, OKRs to one another, you can see a hierarchy of OKRs. So we have company OKRs, which are um, the objectives of the whole organization and give 
all teams and the entire organization a goal to work towards. Um, and this app allows you to um, link the objectives and the OKRs that uh, contribute to the company wants. So it's really up to you to, to build your OKR hierarchy. Um, that's about it for the operational uh, apps. Something uh, that is a really good app as well is the inbox app. So most of the apps that I've showed you here uh, and are transparent in a way that unless you have confidentiality and, and your circles are made private, everyone can access uh, the organization's members' work. So if you work on a project, it's not been made confidential, everyone can access it. With Inbox, it's completely different. Inbox is really your personal space um, where you can um, add and capture your thoughts, your tensions, your notes, anything that goes through your mind and get ready to either work on them um, on your own or to have them ready if you wish to share them in a meeting with your team. Um, you have, you can see here, I have many tensions um, and you can see here as well, this little um, icon means that this tension is currently added to a meeting uh, agenda. So maybe about to be discussed or it's already in a meeting being discussed. Um, you can also see here uh, all the uh, history of the tension that have been processed. As I said, your tension is something that's um, that you own. It's really something that you can feel and that you want to uh, share with the people in your organization, in your circle, or that's something that you want to process on your own. If, for example, I have an idea, something that I use personally myself um, with Holy Spirit uh, in my own work is if I have an idea, I tend to write it in my inbox. And sometimes I have a project or project idea and I can turn my attention, which is really uh, thought and has been through the process of uh, being structured, I can turn into a, a project and then it will just be turned into a project for uh, that circle. Um, I can also turn it into an action for myself, for other people, turn it into an OKR, same, I can turn it into a proposal, which will allow me to, uh, for example, add a role, delete a role, um, maybe bring up an election to assign uh, someone to a role, or I can bring it to a meeting, um, which is great. This uh, feature, bring to meeting, is actually amazing because it takes away the work uh, that you need to do to remember when to bring up what subject. I'll explain. Um, this allows you to automatically um, bring your agenda items, your tensions, anything that you want to talk about to uh, your circles meetings. So you can uh, assign a circle to your tension so we know, you know uh, where you want to talk about this tension and who you want to talk here to, to discuss it with. Um, and then decide the meeting type that you want to bring it to. So let's say if it's an operational tension, I want to bring into a tactical meeting because I know that we talk about operations in this meeting. Uh, and I can see that some meetings are already scheduled so I can decide to uh, really easily add them automatically to the meeting. Let's say I want to bring uh, my attention to another type of meeting, the project review meeting. I have also different types of um, meeting that I can bring them to. If I decide, for example, to bring um, my attention to a meeting that is not yet scheduled, uh, I will be able to uh, just decide that it's automatically added when this type of meeting for this circle is scheduled. So you don't have to think about it and have a look at the meeting has been scheduled. This means that I need to go back to uh, my inbox and import it manually. You don't even have to worry about it. You can just make sure that it automatically uh, gets in imported for you when it's uh, scheduled. So this is a great way of not having to worry about the ideas that uh, you put on paper. Just yeah. keep it in time. And there's also a question. So I don't, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be sure that we have time for questions also. Of course. Sorry. Or should we, question, should we, yeah. should we interrupt for questions maybe even? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Sophie, do you want to read it? Yeah. Um, someone has asked, Sarah, would love to know about any integrations like Trello, G Suite, Slack. 
Uh, we have a Slack integration actually that is available that you can activate for your circle. Um, it, what was the other one? Sorry. Uh, just integrations, Trello, G, G Suit, and Slack. Uh, Trello, we have it already as well. Yeah. So I'll show you here. If you have a Holy Spirit already, you can go in your settings and you have the integrations right there. So because we know that not all teams work the same way, uh, you can activate your integrations directly in your um, in your circle settings. Um, so you can activate Trello. You'll be able to have the actions for Trello in uh, like automatically sent to um to trello so your actions from holy spirit sent to trello and you can uh, use slack as well and activate it for your team link into your channel um something that's really good as well is that all the uh proposals that you send for your circles will be sent to slack so if for example you decide to um send a proposals to ask if someone wants to uh, i mean if you for example want to add a role to your, to your team to your circle you'll be able to add and submit uh, asynchronously the proposal and will be in slack so people can use slack to um, get to that proposal and uh, be made aware that it's been sent if that answers your question i think so <laughs> does anyone else have any questions Oh yeah, we do have. Um, how does your development team navigate the space of being either a full platform or solving a specific task? Uh, mm -hmm, very good question. How does your development team navigate the space being either a full platform or solving a specific task? I don't think I understand the question. I'm very sorry about that. Is it that how we solve? Like us? Yeah. Hmm. Shall I elaborate? Yes. Sure. Yeah. That would be great. Um, yeah. So um, uh, it also speaks a little bit to the integration part. Like mm -hmm. uh, we, I'm a part of a uh, exploration circle where we are looking at tools for to use in, in Sofa, um, and, and we're divided between having a control over the environment saying we want to use slack g suit we want to use these we want to mm -hmm. also want some some tools that are specific to sociocracy but also like all there's also a, a lot of tools like yours who like try and do a like, full platform like go into our environment and only be there and it's it's on the on one hand it's it's liberating like oh finally something that's suited for sociocracy mm -hmm. but on the other hand we're very tied to to your and 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 what is the do you just do a lot of things half asked i'm sorry not I'm not, no, not that's saying fine. You, I know, I know but, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. or do you actually do something very good uh yeah are the downsides to being a full platform does that make sense yeah yeah no i know what you mean so the goal for that is that uh you have only one space i don't know if that answers your question but you have only one space to build your organization and everything links together uh with what we do like the vision that we have is that we have like a solid base we'd rather have something that works and that's very simple and then improve it along the, along the way for example at the moment uh, publications originally it was literally uh just a i'll show you it was just something in the document section that was just there that you could write down on like you could have content some very simple content on um on the circle page what we want to do is that really think about how we do things have a solid base for every and each app that we offer uh we've really listened to uh the people that use our product and i mean i'm, I'm literally the one listening to them so i i know that it takes a lot of time to try and please everyone um, having very complex um, apps and com very complex features can be something that scares uh, people away as well. Everyone has their own way of working and sometimes having a very complex app and very specific thing, um, when something is too rich, it can be a bit scary. I don't know if you agree to that. 
um, especially with that platform. There are many, many tools. Uh, could you mm. imagine if something like everything was really rich? You don't know where to start. You don't know what to do with it. What we do is like have a base, try and understand how uh, our users use our product and then go in that direction with working with the vision that we have for it, which is to make it available for people that work with sociocracy, holacracy, agility as a whole, but as well for organizations that just want yeah. to do it a bit differently, but don't necessarily know why and want to find their own way. I don't know if that makes sense, yeah, that yeah. answers your question, but yeah. that's the way we, we do it. If you look at all the apps that we have, we started very simple and we added more and more features, more and more, more and more um, little things and specificities that are very interesting, I believe. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I have a small question more at this time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and and sorry if you already covered this because I couldn't take part of on the, for, of the first part of the presentation. I'm definitely definitely gonna watch the recording afterwards. But um, I'm just wondering, do you do overlapping circle structure, not just nesting circles, nested circles? No, we don't. <laughs> can can you do that? Because we be so much like to when you have. just to make sure that I just to make sure I understand when you say overlapping, it's having um, circles work transversal like with transversality. All right, so Transvers what, uh, I don't know that word. Transversality is basically what, for example, you need a skill somewhere or two circles work together maybe on a project. Is that what you? uh no so when here and on on the the screen that you're sharing now mm -hmm. you have nested circles like the holocratic view of an uh, yeah. uh an organization each mm -hmm. circle is inside another circle when you have a sociocratic like the scm uh depiction mm -hmm. of this you have one circle that intersects with the other and yeah, in the intersection you have the double link we don't do that that's not something that's visually available, um, but I would be more than happy to discuss that with you. I mean, if you have insights about this, I'd be more than happy to, yeah, take that into consideration. I mean, take that in and discuss it with the team and see if that could bring value to the product. Yeah, of course. We're always interested Thanks. to yeah hear more about this, but not so far. It's not possible. Um, I don't know how it works and how you work with it in your organization, for example, something that might answer some of your questions are transversality so with uh, the governance itself you can't visually see um, the circles working that way or only the way you described um, we're going to bring transversality with uh, the operations that's something that we're currently working on so having for example instead of having one board for uh, one project board for one team um, you'll have many, many project boards and decide to use it as you please. If you decide to have three circles, five roles and, and two members um, to create a project board, you'll be able to. Uh, same with meetings, you'll be able to have the meetings with basically whoever you want to. It's up to you to decide the way you work. You have your teams and your circles, uh, the map that's already done and already created and structured in a way that gives you the information but it's up to you to work with the teams and people and roles that you have in it the way you want thank you you're welcome thank you so much <laughs> i think yeah i think we are well we are over time but this was lovely and um maybe i would just okay got it Yes, so the meetings here, you can basically build the meetings that uh, you want to build uh, through templates in the administration settings as an admin. So, for example, you want to um, build any type of meeting, you can have the different steps right there. So here I'm going to do project review or quarterly, for example, you can decide the circle in which you want to have your meeting, schedule it as well. Um, depending on when you want to have it and repeat it uh, every two weeks, three weeks. So you choose the frequency um, in which it's going to be scheduled and then you can schedule it. And if you start it right there, we can start the meeting. 
you have the different steps and the steps where you can review your checklist metrics, uh, OKRs, projects, and they link to um, the apps that you have right there. And also the agenda. So the secretary, which you have here, will be able to, um, to process the, uh, the tensions that the participants can add to the meeting. So everyone can add um, attention any time during the meeting, but they can also decide to use, as I mentioned uh, before, the uh, bring to meeting feature or also import it to the meeting if it's already scheduled. And then here you have the members directory, very simply put, with all the people that are part of your organization, which you can filter um, by name, role, or circle. You can also use the, the search here, which is fairly rich um, to look for the people or uh, any item that you're looking for. And uh, here in the member section, you can see uh, admins, uh, inactives, uh, basically the two of the two out of the three types of members that we have. So you have administrators, which can um, define the settings for the organization. You have users, which are basically the main members of your organizations and inactives, which are guest users um, in your organization. And that was about it. I was almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Say a word about pricing because that I also want to keep as information, at least as of May 2023. I'm sorry, um, I didn't quite catch that. Pricing, pricing is what I would Pricing, to. okay, pricing for organizations. Uh, let me show you here. I think I have it here. I'll be able to show you the plans already which is going to be easier all right so we have our plans right there we offer four uh, four different types of plans depending on the size of your organization depending on um on the apps that you want to use the goal for it is for them to be modular and you include in your plan what you actually need uh, for small organizations of uh, 20 um, users, if you need 20 users, you can use the start plan, uh, which allows you to have access to the governance section here, so the governance app, the publications app, once it's out. Um, you also have access to proposals because it's working on your um, structure. Um, included in the start plan as well, you can have actions, projects and OKRs, although they are limited to a certain number of items. Um, and uh, you also have uh, the meetings as well included, also limited to, I believe, 300 meetings. Um, the inbox is also part of our core features. So you have access as, um, as a, a start user uh, to inbox proposals, publications and governance as a core features, and then uh, actions, projects, uh, OKRs and meetings, uh, which are limited. Um, these are for small organizations, and then you have three other types of plans, depending on the number of users that you want to um, have, and they, I mean, these ones are um, modular. This means that the core features that I mentioned here with governance, so governance publications, proposals, um, and inbox, they are included by default in these plans. Um, and then if you decide to work with actions, projects, OKRs or meetings, you can decide to add the apps uh, to your plan if you want to. Um, the number of users that you can include to in your, in your plan, so in RISE, you can have up to 100 users. This means that if you want to work uh, with features that are a bit more advanced, you can decide to have RISE and have uh, five um, users in it as well, if you decide. If it's, it's not for 100 users, it's really up to 100 users. Um, and I mentioned as well the different types of users. We have, um, so users, when I say user, it's really active users, the one that participates in governance, that have access to operations. Um, but you can also ha have up to 100 inactive users included in, in this plan as well, which means that if you want to have um, I don't know, 20 active users and 20 people that are maybe consultants um, in your organization, you can also have them 
uh, add it to your organization and to um, your, your governance structure as well. Um, this plan also includes um, circle privacy, you can add custom fields, um, and, um, and yeah, actions, projects, OKRs and meetings are modular and scale is uh, pretty much, I wouldn't say the same, but the more advanced offer that we have for up to 300 users this time. Uh, with this, you have access to our API, um, and you can also have a SAML um, authentication activated for your organization and its members. And same, you can have up to 300 inactive users, so guest users included in um, your plan. Again, you have access to the same core features, governance publications, um, yeah, governance publications, proposals, and uh, and inbox members, of course, the directory is, is part of the core features. Um, and then again, add uh, the additional uh, apps or add-ons that you want to have. And Enterprise is um, a bit of a different plan for really big organization. And uh, this is something to be set with um, our sales team, of course. Uh, and you can define um, the, the plan and everything that you need in it, depending on um, how you want your project to, to be handled. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention as well, uh, the three add-ons, which are not included in the um, core features. So time spent in role, which allows you to uh, record the time that you spend in each one of your role. So here, for example, I can see that I have many roles and I can uh, define uh, the time and energy that I put in every one of my role. It allows um, the organization to know where energy, where uh, members are needed and how to um, build its structure depending on, uh, on yeah, the energy and the time spent in every single role. Uh, you also have access, uh, if you wish to include it in your plan, in um, to the uh, translation app, uh, which allows you to um, translate the content of your organization. So the content of your circles and roles, uh, you can have up to two or three uh, different types of languages included in your plan or even more if you decide and um, decide for uh, all the content that you have in your circles and roles to be translated. So for example, if you have people in your organization that work in another language, um, they'll be able to uh, navigate in autonomy to uh, on the on the governance charts and uh, and translate the content to have easy access to them, and then we have the Holacracy app, um, which allows you to have many many um, contents. So a habit helper, which um, gives you a sequence of twelve um, emails and, and lessons to onboard you on Holacracy and uh, many more settings, which allow you to build your projects and bring value as a holacracy practitioner to your spirit or organization. And that's about it. So if anyone has any questions, send them my way. <laughs>